Good morning, everybody. Pastor Steve here. Thank you so much for being with me for today's devotion. We are in the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. So go ahead and open your Bible there if you haven't already. And uh, as we get ready, I want to ask you to be praying. I am attending my first meeting of the Board of Trustees for the Southern Evangelical Seminary in, in Charlotte Pineville area, which uh, is relocating, by the way, to Rock Hill this year. And this is the seminary that sponsors the annual apologetics conference that we've hosted now. This will be our third year this October and uh, have uh, a board meeting coming up Uh uh, uh, tomorrow, and so really covet your prayers, and then also be praying for the uh, for the apologetics conference that happens in October. For God to use that in a great way. All right, today um, Matthew chapter four. Just a few notes before I share with you my devotional thought. One, this this passage talks about the temptations of Jesus after he was baptized, and right as he was beginning his uh, public ministry. But I want I want you to notice how Jesus responded or dealt with each of the temptations. He did it by quoting Scripture, which really speaks to how important it is for you and me to be engaging the Word of God, to encounter Jesus and become more like Him. The more you engage with the Word of God, the better equipped you are to deal with temptations. It's also your mind and heart are focused more toward God and less toward the temptation. So constantly engaging Scripture makes a difference in our spiritual strength. A second thing I want us to notice is Jesus' uh, message in verse 17 says from that time, this is after the temptations, okay, and he, and, 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 uh, and he begins his ministry. He began, notice, notice what it says. He began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus preached repentance for someone to enter the kingdom of God. It's the same message John preached back in John and uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, when John the Baptist said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The same message, repentance, 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 means turning around, turning from your sin, and turning to God in faith and obedience following Jesus. And then I want you to notice something about discipleship. In verse 19, he said to these two brothers, uh, Simon and uh, and Andrew or Peter, uh, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And in that simple statement is an explanation of discipleship, following Jesus and becoming, growing fishers of men, outreach, evangelism, being on mission. And remember, we, like many churches, define a disciple as this, someone who is following Jesus, someone who is being transformed or changed by Jesus and someone who is on mission with Jesus. And that's what he's saying to Peter and, 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 and Andrew. Follow me, and I'm going to make you to become. Making them become is their growth, is their change. And what they do as a result of their growth is evangelism. I'll make you fishers of men. That's what a disciple is. And remember, in our D groups, hear me, in our D groups, the purpose is not Bible study. The purpose is to become disciples. Disciples follow Jesus, are growing and changing, and they're sharing the gospel. They're on mission with Jesus Christ. They're inviting people to church. They're praying for lost people. They're sharing their testimony. They're talking to people about Jesus. They're on mission with Jesus to see people saved and enter the kingdom of God. And so our D groups, we engage the word of God so we can encounter Jesus and grow and change. Engage the word of God so as we meet Jesus and we grow and change, we become evangelistic. If that's not happening then we're not becoming disciples. We're just studying a book. And we don't study the book just to study the book and have head information. We study it to change and become evangelists for Jesus, to become full, full disciples of Jesus Christ. So in your D group, why do we ask you to memorize a Bible verse each month? Because we're to be on mission. And those Bible verses are evangelistic verses to help you in sharing the gospel. And if your D group is not practicing memorizing those, you're not doing what you're supposed to do to become a fully devoted, developed disciple. Why do we have the, the prayer time where, where not only are we praying for needs in our lives, but we're praying for our ones, for individuals by name who are lost? Every D group needs to do that if it's to be a legitimate D group and not just a Bible study. Anyway, uh, the fourth thing I want to say, I want to talk about the calling of Peter and and uh, and uh, Andrew, because when you read this account, um, 
there in verse 18 and following. It sounds like Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee, he sees these two guys, these two brothers in their boats, and he says, hey, to you two guys that I've never met with before, come and follow me, and I'll make you be, f- be fishers of men. And they just got up out of their boat and right away and went and started following Jesus, left their family, left their business first time. But that's not what actually happened. See, John's gospel, chapter 1, tells us that that um, Andrew had already spent time with Jesus and had a conversation with him, spent a whole day with Jesus. And, and there's an inference that probably Peter had as well. <clears throat> so is there a contradiction here? No. What you have in Matthew is just a summary statement. doesn't give all the details. doesn't give all the background. It's just a summary statement. Jesus sees them and says, hey, guys, come and follow me. Well, that's accurate. But he he just doesn't tell you that there had been an ongoing conversation and that this was simply the climactic moment when he said, come and follow me. It's a style of writing. We do it all the time. We make summary statements without giving all the before and after, without giving all the surrounding details. Sometimes we just make summary statements. They're, They're accurate. They just don't give you all the details. That's all that's going on here. So don't read this and think, wow, they had never seen Jesus, never heard Jesus and got out of their boat. No. He'd had conversations with them, and this was the final invitation. You ready, guys? Come and follow me. And they did. So there's that. Now, real quickly, my devotional thoughts found in verses 24 and 25. So let's read that together. He said, the news about him, news about Jesus, spread throughout all Syria. And they brought to him all who were ill, those suffering with various disease and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. And look at verse 25. Large crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. That's a pretty wide range geographically, considering they didn't have telephones, television, internet, etc. Syria, the Decapolis, Jordan. Judea, Jerusalem, Galilee, big area, okay? Big area covers like today Lebanon and Syria, Jordan, and Israel. And in a brief, brief period of time, people from all those regions came to listen to Jesus, to follow Jesus. Why? Well, look at verse 24. The news about him spread throughout all those areas. How did it spread? I mean, no telephones, no media, no, no, no Instagram, no Twitter. How did the news spread? Word of mouth. And by the way, that's still the most effective way. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Personal recommendation. And so I'll go back to what I said a moment ago about D groups and those memory verses and praying for your ones who are lost by name every week and asking those accountability questions. Well, who have you invited to church? Did you have any opportunities? Those prayers, praying every day for an opportunity to share the gospel, praying every day for boldness to speak and then praying for people by name. Disciples do that. When we spread the news of Jesus, it has an impact. When we're silent, unfortunately, that also has an impact, and it's not a good one. So your D groups need to do what they're set up to do so we can become disciples who spread the good news of Jesus Christ. That's the message for today. I'll see you uh, tomorrow as we wrap up this week and then look at chapter five. God bless you, everybody.